Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan, and I have a very special guest, Vicki Townsend. She is the co-founder of National Association of Divorce Professionals. Welcome, Vicki. Oh, thank you so much for having me today. I, so, uh, I'm honored and I appreciate everything that you do in this industry to help your clients go through this in a kinder and gentler way. Yeah, you know, I think that's the one thing that resonated when I found out about you. You live in South Florida, and um, and I found out that you that you really bring a lot of these professionals together, in a, and are trying to make a difference, a positive difference, through the professionals by training them and and all that. And uh, I think that a lot of our viewers would think that these professionals are. It, it, they don't necessarily have a positive context of uh, lawyers and like all the people that play a part in uh, going through, you know, their custody situation. So um, it doesn't wanna... have a bad reputation for no reason, right? It, <laughs> you know, it, it does. It does. It's, it's a sad state. I, and I don't mean to be smiling through it, but what I, the reason that I'm, uh, it does bring a smile to my face is that, yeah, you know, we're trying to make a change in that very uh, that very thing, which is that you know it has been difficult at best for families to get through it, and so our goal is to make a really positive and big impact on this process through the professionals that touch on the lives of families, and a lot of that reputation, some of it is earned, right? There are people out there that have definitely taken advantage of, sh of uh, shattered and broken families. Um, but there are a lot of good professionals out there that really want the best for their clients. And through uh, making wonderful connections and having wonderful resources at the NADP where our people, everybody that's a member of our organization feels the same way. Either you align with our message that this can be done better and that there's a, way, a great way to do it, or you don't. And if you do, you're a member of the NADP and you surround yourself with professionals that are um, like-minded in that approach. Yeah, you know, that really does make a difference. We, you know, to, to know that when, a lot of times when you go in and you're, you're kind of shopping for an attorney um, and, you know, you, you get it, the people who recommend it are usually the people that that won their case and they're like, yeah, I like this attorney. And you, and I know it was my own personal experience. You walk in and they did a great sales job. Mm -hmm. And that was the last positive inter interaction you had with them. <laughs> right. right. It, it's, it's funny. You should say that. Um, I was on the phone with, um, with someone the other night. He's a forensic accountant, great guy. And what I was trying to explain to him was that, you know, this, this is a, an industry where, you know, this is out of sight, out of mind. Nobody goes on, you know, Facebook and takes a selfie with their divorce attorney. They don't check in when they're taking their deposition at the courthouse. Um, you know, they don't do a Facebook live when the moving van is moving away from your home. Um, and so I tried to sit there and this is a true story. I couldn't remember my divorce attorney's last name and it's and i have never approached him about becoming a member of the nadp and he did a great job don't get me wrong he was you know he was a great guy um and what i recommend him yeah yeah maybe I, but, but i now know that i have an arsenal of other other people that i could recommend that you know as well and i i haven't actually approached him because that i have such um as good as it as an experience as I had, which I think I had a kind of decent experience in, in considering, I'm still triggered by his name even. And for me, like sitting here right next talking to you, I still can't remember his name. Isn't that interesting? Wow. It's like a mental block. It, it is. It totally it is. is. It totally is. And um and that's the, um, that's the challenge that a, a family law attorney really faces is that nobody really does talk about them, good or bad, right? If you ended up having a decent outcome anyway, it's still a crappy process. It still stinks on its best day. 
So it's one of those things that's out of sight, out of mind, and let's not, let's not deal with this anymore. So that's why it was important for us to, to come up with some, uh, some opportunities for the good, the good ones, yeah, the good attorneys that really are careful about how their families go through it so that they can actually have um, uh, incoming right resources from, from people that work with divorcing clients also, uh, but that they could have an arsenal of really dedicated um, professionals that really want to help their, their clients. And so, and it's better for them because when you have great resources to use for your clients, it's really a reflection of you as a professional, right? Yeah. You know, I, I would assert that there's, there's no scarcity of, of divorce cases to get. And, um, and it just seems like it's a very frustrating thing. And a lot of times if you do not, if you don't have that emotional, that compassion, that emotional intelligence uh, to go along with your, your sharp ability to, to lawyer, it really can be a disaster for your case, for the case of your client, or just, you know, they walk around, they walk away not feeling heard or feeling traumatized and not knowing, um, it's just a very disempowering place to be. Um, and what I understand about you is you, you really try to ed educate the membership and bring that understanding, that maybe that social oh. science to it of understanding where their world's coming from. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that we have um, is a certification program that is all about communicating with couples in crisis. Um, because it takes, it's a different skill set than, you know, standing in line at Publix and talking to the person behind you, dealing with families in that are shattered and broken is beyond just a conversation. It really takes emotional state management on your part as the professional to be able to help get your client out of this frozen state and into a state where they can absorb the information and do what they need to do to get through this process in a, in a better way. So we offer programs for our professionals so that they can do that, so that they can actually communicate in a better way with their clients and understand their clients and communicate and, and so that they are speaking in a way that their clients can understand. And empathy is a big part of that. Putting yourself in the shoes of your client is a very important part of that. Yeah, I think that's definitely the missing component. Uh, I know that parents who are dealing with high conflict situations like parental alienation, and then there's there within the parental alienation, there's that there, there are tons of fears that the client can have around uh, is their child, maybe they've, they, they're the ones that ended up getting um, non-residential um, designation. And then there's a, all these fears that when they're with their other parent, is there abuse? There's like, there's just such, such, such a plethora of emotions that are going on that an attorney not, doesn't normally get trained in all of those aspects of dealing right. with that person. Well, yeah, we, we were talking earlier about the fact that, you know, attorneys go to law school to become lawyers. They don't go to law school and uh, walk out as therapists. And sometimes it's on the job training. And um, I think that some of those problems that we talk about and the reputation that this industry has is because of their lack of training in communication um, and empathy and putting themselves into the, the shoes of their clients and, and the skill set that it takes to deal with high conflict families. Um, it's not, this, is, this is not an industry for the faint of heart. Um, and it, it requires um, some, some uh, you know, additional studying and additional, um, you know, uh, openness to other uh, tracks of their business, um, not just the legal side, but again, that communication skills side. 
um, that is different than, than what maybe they assumed was going to be the way it was going to be. And um, not everybody is, is cut out for high conflict families. So those people that are, you know, are a blessing to families that are going through this. And also the, the you know, the, our, one of our taglines is it because it takes a village and it takes people like you, right? It takes mediators. It takes, I mean, even just the legal issues that are involved in a family's divorce include bankruptcy and will and estate planning. Um, it, criminal law is involved in um, it, one in a, out of four cases of divorce in this country. Um, there's tax laws. There's, you know, there's all, immigration down here in South Florida. That's a big deal. So you need to have skilled uh, resources. For, for your clients and to, to be able to understand when they come in and what's, what's needed and having the communication within our industry is really important because sometimes, you know, one of the, the things that we found is that, you know, if, if you're with a family law attorney, um, they may not understand the, the settlement statement that they're creating might set that family up for never being able to qualify for a mortgage again. And they don't necessarily know that because they don't, they don't know how mortgage works. They're not, they're not experts in real estate. Um, so those are the types of things that um, gives that bad reputation, right? Because, um, and this happens all day, every day. I use that, um, the mortgage thing quite often because that is a real problem and that happens every day and it's probably happening right now while you and I are talking is that a settlement statement is being written that will stop a family or at least one member of that couple from being able to move into housing. I've seen it. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I've had right? clients where they, where, you know, you're walking into the middle after it's a disaster and they're like, yeah. I, I don't, where do I go from here? And I said, well, you know, you, you made an agreement that was not wise. Now you're having to unravel it. And obviously it was not workable. And right. now you're trying to unravel and, and um, you're kind of, you're stuck with whatever uh, the agreement is right now. Right, and, you know. right. And, and, then you, and then if it does set you up for failure in other areas, it's on you to pay to get it made right. Right. You, you know, so, so there's financial consequences and then you have to relive the trauma of all of that again to get it right. And you have to negotiate with somebody that you don't like on the other side to get them to re-sign and, you know, redo your, your divorce settlement statement so that you can simply qualify for a mortgage. And it's, um, so, so it comes with, it comes with, uh, at this web of, of uh, you know, things in a family's lives that have to be untangled from each other. And, you know, you have, you know, the professionals that are involved and there are so many, there are, we have, we have about 90 different industries and professions that impact, that touch on lives of families, you know, from real estate and mortgage, mental health, child psychologists, you know, divorce coaches, career coaches, you know, et cetera. Um, but having them all understand how, when they are, it's kind of like a suspension bridge. When you, when you touch a wire on one side, that it impacts the bridge on the other side, near the land on the other side that you can't necessarily see. So it's really important to be able to um, communicate, have those communication skills within, within the, the professions that, that touch on these you know, these processes. And if you think that you know it all, you know, you definitely don't. <laughs> and it changes every day. Uh, things that because of this coronavirus, um, you know, things are changing daily. How the court system is handled, handling divorces is, ch is changing daily. Oh, yeah. Um, so you need to be on top of this stuff. Yeah. For um, speaking of things that changed, I know you were supposed to do, you were, uh, had, uh, a conference happening in Las Vegas in the spring that had to be canceled. I know as a matter of fact, to do a, 
physical conference in the end of April. And no, actually, here's there. the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. You had yours. Ours, ours is supposed to happen tomorrow, May 14th. Tomorrow was when ours was supposed to happen in Las Vegas. And um, uh, it's, it's, and it was sad because it was, the content was so amazing and people were going to walk away with so much valuable information for their clients. So we're really disappointed and we don't know when that's going to happen again. Um, you know, it may not happen for another couple of years before people are comfortable in going to a place where there are hundreds or thousands of people um, around you. That's going to take, there's going to be a lot of healing that this, not only just our country, but our, our world is going to have to go through, not only just physically, but emotionally, because there are so many fears that people are experiencing because of this. Um, some are warranted and some are not. Um, and some are fears for the here and now. Hopefully they won't be lasting, but um, people have to negotiate waters that have never been uh, in, in our path before. And it's, it's scary. It's scary. We're all, we're all scared in our own ways. We've all got fears. And ha working with people who are going through high conflict, like parental alienation and, and all of, I mean, it's, this is their world. They, they live in fear, the fear of what if, what could happen. I mean, just like all these things and for them, for them to be thrown into this pandemic situation where everybody is, um, is sheltering in place, then they already had a tough time being able to get their time with their child. And now this actually almost gives um, a restrictive pay, uh, gatekeeping parent permission. One hundred percent. We we have seen um, it, we have seen it as an excuse uh, where where no reasonable person would would see that child sharing can still continue. Um, but sometimes it's based in the legitimate fear that they have um, versus um, kind of a, a made up you know reason to keep your child away from your, your ex-spouse. Um, this is, this has turned out to be somewhat of a perfect storm for that. And, um, and if you've got that type of mindset that says, I'm not letting, you know, that jerk have my kid. And this is, this is the reason I'm going to use. Um, and then the court systems are closed, right? You, you know, it's, so some court systems may see that as an emergency, an emergency hearing, but most don't. So yeah. it's, a, it's a, a bit of a challenge in, in that regard too. Some, some court systems you know, can hear um, you know, hearings on this, this platform that you and I are using. Um, it, is, uh, it is something that we see um, across the country, not in all areas. Um, but it is for the most emergency of emergencies. It's not, um, it's not for, you know, even spousal support. It, you know, it, it's tough. It, you know, it's, you know, people that are asking to have their spousal and child support, you know, re reevaluated and renegotiated. That that's not considered an emergency right now. Yeah, so, it really, you know. The thing that I've noticed is when, you know, people are desperately trying to continue, you know, their employment. And of course, now employers are letting a lot of people come and work from home. I've seen shifts in schools that where I have one son that was physically going to USF and then he had, and that was a blender because his, he also worked. So now his work was from home and now he had to figure out how he was going to get him his education from home. It was just like all these steep learning curves that were shifting and the technology has always been there, but yet sometimes that need is, uh, creates the birth of, of all of this. Um, right. and I say that to say that, you know, I get that there may not be an ability to have physical, uh, contact and physical um, time sharing and all that, but there are these technologies that are available and a restrictive gatekeeping parent that's 
um, trying to use a legitimate pandemic as the reason to withhold the child, not, I, I really think that judges need to hold these parents to account and say, no, there are other ways that it's your, the responsibility is on that parent who has the kids in their care to make sure you do everything that you can to make sure that you can still give quality time to the other parent. Right. I mean, even again, using a platform like this, FaceTime, um, online games that, you know, you can play with, with the parent. And um, there are cases where um, uh, the judge has gotten involved, the judge has gotten involved and has mandated that um, if the child is old enough to use the technology and to sit, you know, in front of the computer screen, that, that the other parent has to leave the room and provide proof that, that, that there is nobody else in the room so that that child can have um, quality uh, time with their parent on a platform like Zoom or Skype or FaceTime. So there is, there is, hmm. um, I've got a question. I don't know. It, I'm wondering because of the technology, it actually, it spans thousands of miles to be able to be in one space. I know that, that some of our parents have had concerns about the fact that there's, you know, the attorneys are in, in the back pocket of the judge and, and, and there's such closeness going on in the court, you know, the courthouse amongst the, the legal professionals that they can never get a fair shake. And something that kind of came to my mind was how difficult would it be to um, have a judge brought in by Zoom from some place where they couldn't have a pre-existing relationship with the attorneys? What, what difference mm, would that be? I, that's a good guy. That, that I'll have to give some thought to that. I'm, I'm not sure how that would, uh, how the court system can handle that. You know, that, that's, you know, maybe some retired judges would be kind of cool to, to, to bring that out. Maybe that's something we can lobby for. Because I think that this is, um, this pandemic is, you know, it did not, the, the virus did not stop the day we opened our beauty salons. Excuse me. <coughs> Because we chose it to 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 open up our our businesses, <coughs> it's still a legitimate health concern. We still have to deal with that, and we will be dealing with it for a long time. And it's going to be interesting to see how the courts handle it. We want our people, um, you know, whether they're members of the NADP or not, to be prepared for what's about to befall on them because of the, this coronavirus, because think about it, the court systems in smaller communities are shut down and are not open. So nobody's been filing. So those people are gonna file as soon as the court systems open up. And then there's, there are those people that have been in a home that's um, either not safe physically or emotionally for them anymore and are choosing, or also they just look at their spouse and go, I cannot stomach you one more day. Mm. Those people are filing. So it'll be, you know, for lack of a better word, and I know that this, you know, I, I, a tsunami is the word I'm thinking of, you know, this huge wave of divorces that are going to go into the court system, that it will overwhelm the court system. It's kind of like, you know, we needed to flatten the curve in the, in the, um, in the medical community. There will be this spike in the um, divorce industry. And, and probably every industry with the, within the court system, uh, because nobody's been able to do anything. But in this industry, there will be additional filings because of the pandemic and because of the closed social distancing. Um, and we have to be able to help our clients when there's not going to always be answers right away, just like what you talked about. There's, that may not be something that the court systems are going to be able to handle as they're flooded over the course of you know, hope, I don't know what's going to happen um, and when it's going to return to, nor, uh, you know, normal, but um, it may not be the answer everybody's looking for. 
we may have to, um, you know, we just have to prepare our clients that this is, there is no perfect answer. There is no perfect solution. So that's why it's super important for all of the, um, the professionals that are working with these families to have some skilled training on how to communicate in such a way that they can help their clients help themselves. Because I think that that's really going to be the answer because the, the court systems will not be able to handle every single, every matter. They just, not in, not in the foreseeable future, in, in my opinion. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a tidal wave on, on the system. Oh, I can, I can imagine. I'm sure. I, uh, right. now you have, there are chapters, are there, cha there's chapters across the, the nation of the National Association mm -hmm. of Divorce Professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right now we have 44, I think. Awesome. And if you ask me, <laughs> I think I you know, kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, uh, to, to remember as we're, we're even opening chapters online, which is really awesome. Uh, so we have local chapters to the communities, which would be provide community support for the professionals and, and resources for the professionals that are going through it. We also now are starting our national chapter that will be an online chapter where you can meet and connect with professionals from around the country so that if you have a client that's in you know, New York, you can get online and you can meet some of these professionals each and every month. So we're giving, you know, we, we think that that's a great resource and a valuable resource to our members to have resources around the country that they can call on. We have a great directory of professionals that people can use um, to find other, other great resources for their clients. So sometimes you're going to need a resource and sometimes you're going to be a resource. So we want to be able to connect everybody together so that good professionals are there to serve their clients. The, the, the best, the elite in this industry. So what makes your, what makes your organization different from any other organization? Because I'm sure there's a, there's other attorney organizations out there right. or, well, um, we, and I yeah, get that we're not just attorneys. Oh, we're not. We are, um, uh, you know, the, the tagline, because it takes a village, it really is, a, it's the best, it was the best, uh, you know, visual we could probably give to somebody because like I was telling you just in the legal community, there's probably about eight or 10 different areas of law that need to be, um, you know, settled. If you are a small business owner, like I was and am now, um, but those businesses have to be valued, divided, contracts have to be written, and then the financial people that touch on their money, so their financial advisors, accountants, forensic accountants, a money manager, um, there are people that deal with their emotional well-being, so their marriage counselors, their individual therapists, child psychologists, divorce coaches. That's one thing that I wish that I knew about when I was going through my divorce was that there is somebody that could have been my coach to get me through some of the things that I was challenged uh, to get through myself. And one of those things, um, I don't know if I ever have ever told you this, but I was being held in contempt of court because I could not get through my financial affidavit because every time I put down how much it costs to have my grass cut was like paper cut. And I was dying of a thousand cuts, um, you know, and I just, Every day I had to try and do that document and do it emotionally. I couldn't do it. And um, so if I knew then what I know now, I would have absolutely hired a divorce to help me get this done. Um, there are people thing. that, you know, with, it is a huge thing. I, uh, listen, I'm oh. being held in contempt of court. I mean, I had somebody show up at my door with a subpoena. So I know that it is, um, it's, it's, a challenge and um, and I'm also not one that works well but you know get getting those documents and you know I'm not a spreadsheet girl I'm a creative person um, I like to be a solution provider but one of the ways that I don't do it is with spreadsheets and things like that so that on top of the emotional component of it made it very very difficult for me 
Um, but now I know that there are solutions that I can tell the, the world about that's out there. So divorce coaches are one of them. There's also career coaches because if you're a stay-at-home mom and you haven't worked for 13 years, you know, what are you going to do? What are you qualified for? Where do you need to go? How do you need to, um, to move into the job, you know, the best job market for, for your skill sets? Um, and then there's the people that deal with their mutually held assets. Primarily, those are like their small businesses or their residential home or their investment properties. But there's also art collections and car collections and yacht collections and tchotchke collections that have to be valued, sold, or distributed amongst the couple, you know, and who, somebody has to do that. So it's a very wide net. And so you asked about what's unusual. We are all of those. Everybody that's in that is involved with the NADP because that's the village that it takes to get a couple through this. So um, uh, that is what I think is our, one of our unique selling propositions as to why you should be a part of it. Um, but also we do a lot of education around helping them be better. One of the ones I was telling you about was the communication skills training that we do. Um, we also are, are, have partnerships with um, other certification programs in real estate, in mortgage, um, in financial advising, in, uh, for our attorneys, we have something that helps them understand how money flows and business valuations so that, because we talked about, you know, a lawyer went to school to be a lawyer, not an accountant, not a mental health counselor. So we help them understand when they're litigating in front of a judge, how that money actually works and how it flows so that they can better represent their, their client in a court of law. They can, you know, go up there with some credibility and, and you know, understand the language. And, and at the end of the day, the biggest thing to walk away from this, from a professional, from on the professional side, is that divorce, in the divorce industry has its own culture, has its own language, and um, it is kind of fickle to break it, to, to, you know, to get into and to be a trusted resource. So we kind of do and provide all of that information. How do you communicate? How do you have credibility in this industry? And then how do you become a trusted advisor that somebody would refer business to, to help a client go through one of the most um, difficult things that they will ever go through in their life? Second Absolutely. only to death of a loved one. Yeah, it's not, it's certainly not an easy situation. It's not a, it's not a happy place to be and it's to not. know that you have trust and, you know, have people that they, you trust them to have your back and they're right. And you don't feel like that they have your, their hand in your pocket. And, um, uh, that's, it, it just makes a huge difference, especially when dealing with high conflict families where, you know, there's, there's people are just an emotional mess at that time. They're worried about, you know, are they going to have a roof over their head? They're worried about, are they going to have a relationship with their children in the, when it's over? Um, there's just so many, so many factors. And to have an organization like yours, that's all about um, continuing education and in those areas that would really make a difference because you're t dealing yeah. with, I mean, really family court is that, is the unicorn branch of the court system. It's, you know, court is designed to divide assets and, and all that. And you've got family, family court and you're dealing with emotions. So. Well, one of the things that has always um, kind of been, you know, stuck in my craw was that we use a criminal system to solve a family matter. And it's not, a perfect system by any stretch of the imagination. And if we can have um, empathetic and caring professionals that um, will help their families get through it in the best way possible, even high conflict families can do this with less financial and emotional damage to themselves and to their children and to each other. Wouldn't that be a better legacy to leave to your family and to your clients, that you helped a family that was um, gonna burn the house down, 
settle down, solve their problems as amicably as possible with as little financial and emotional devastation or impact as possible. And that is what we are working hard at each and every day with our members is to help them help their clients through it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been great talking with you, Vicki, today. Uh, you as well, Danica. Thank you so much. And I just want to say, you know, to, to what you do on a regular basis and the impact that you are making in this dark side of the world of divorce, because it, you bring a bright light and hope um, and, um, and solutions for families by bringing them these resources. And, and so you are doing amazing work. You're doing God's work. And uh, I just want to, uh, you know, just A, say thank you for, for what you do, but just commend you for doing it so brilliantly. So thank you for that. And thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. I, I so appreciate it when we did um, the Parent Alienation show at Christmas time because it was something that spoke to my heart as somebody who didn't have their children on Christmas um, and struggled with that. And so you, you, you help families. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, <laughs> I'm going to walk away with a smile on my face for the rest of the day. <laughs> thank right. you. Right. When you wake up every day and you do good in the world, um, you get to sleep a really nice sleep at night. Yes, absolutely. Making the world a better place. All right. Thank you, Vicki. And thank you all for joining us uh, for another uh, episode of Custody Matters Live. I hope to see you again next week.